Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we delay the start of our originally scheduled program for this special news bulletin. We have just received word from News Central that the official pronouncement has finally been made. God is dead. The pronouncement was issued simultaneously from the major capitals of the world, Washington, London, Paris, Moscow, Buenos Aires, Peking, and Tokyo. There has been no report of widespread violence, but a sharp increase of suicide has been noted. World public reaction generally has ranged from despair to complete apathy. It is expected that a day of solemn mourning will be observed this coming Friday, commencing at 1500 hours Greenwich Mean Time. Ceremonies both public and private will be conducted to honor the memory of the late deity. Known to us as God. In a sense, it's rather like a child finally discovering that there really isn't any Santa Claus. At any rate, we bid a final farewell to this God image of our intellectual infancy, symbolically represented here by this empty coffin. No longer a threat of eternal damnation or eternal reward, simply an empty coffin. In the words of Paul of Tarsus, ancient and ardent champion of the deceased, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put aside childish things. After these many thousands on thousands of years, our childhood is finally behind us. And our maturity stretches brilliantly before us with the illusion put to rest once and for all, man can move forward into the new age, molding his own destiny, forging and shaping his own future without fear, without limit. God is dead. Long live mankind. going to do with that coffin. Leave it here in case the rest of the community want to pay their respects, I guess. A nice piece of staging. Maybe the great unwashed will finally get the idea. You're going to Memorial Bash at Bergen. Wait, or we'll miss it. Come to us. The people will be there soon. I don't believe it, Elena. The words Dr. Bergman say, I just don't believe it. Tomas, you don't believe him. I don't believe him. But we have to work for him. Come on. of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. What are you living for? We are animals who worship. We need something to give meaning and purpose to our lives. Some people live for God and the unselfish service of other people. The two are really the same although we're not always aware of it. Other people reject God. It's not that they deny his existence. It's that they simply ignore him. What do these people live for? What becomes their God? Some retreat behind the walls of their own egos and live just for themselves. Others make money or sex or power their life's goal. What about these people? Do these things give them the freedom and fulfillment they desire? Do these things turn them on and make them come alive? Or do they have the very opposite effect? There you are, Professor. Well, George, I'm glad you became a university president because bartending certainly isn't your strong point. Dry that out with a little gin, won't you, please? We'll be happy to. 
no idea you were that fond of raw martinis. Well, today's a special day. Cheers. I'll drink to that. You gotta get drunk. It's always making the case. Cheers right back to you. A very happy no god day. I cut it out. Yes, but I still think the whole thing does lack really good taste. I mean, well, why single out Good Friday as a day of international morning? You all right? It, it all seems so gross. Of course, I mean, darling. Uh, well, why overdo the symbolism? Ah, uh, my dear madam, I must disagree. Symbolism is very important. After all, we live by it, don't we? Red means stop, green means go. The man of the clouds, always known as Big Daddy, or the father, and then the son, the fanatic visionary, nailed to the cross, and the Holy Ghost, the pure white dove, no less. The whole system lives on symbols, so why not let it die that way? Well, I can't fight you on that, but I agree with Nancy. I think they're making a bit much out of it. Excuse me. Signora, the food is all ready. Maybe they would like to eat now? Oh, um, well, no, not right now. Let them finish their drinks first. Uh, try to keep it warm for me, will you? It'll just be a few minutes. Si. Well, the um, soup's on, friends. Tomas is getting a little nervous. Can you uh, get me a refill, Hal? We're celebrating, aren't we? I, I'm a little late on a call to the office. May I? Say hello to Miss Jensen for me, would you, dear? She wouldn't remember you. Dr. Bergman, my name is Marley. It's good to see you again. Marley? I, I don't recall. I can't say that I blame you. It's at least five years. We met at the International Convention in Zurich. I was European correspondent for Globe Press at the time. We had lunch together at the old Metropole. You were kind enough to give me an interview. Oh, yes, of course. Well, uh, well what can I do for you, Mr. Marley? My New York office wants a sampling of opinions. Reaction to today's pronouncement from scientists and clergymen and prominent educators like yourself. You were the first one that I wanted to talk to. Well, uh, come in, won't you? We're having a few faculty members over, and uh, Mr. Stephen Kelly, the chairman of our Board of Regents, perhaps you'd like to get their reaction as well. Listen to me, John. You're a vice president because I made you a vice president. You do what I tell you. Get on the phone. You tell that dumb Dago he accepts our deal or he's out of business at the end of the week. Listen, don't give me this immoral, dishonest stuff. We're running a business, not a Sunday school. Sunday schools are now out of operation. Haven't you heard? You just do what I tell you. I'll see you soon. Yeah, bye. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, uh, now, I just called to say I'm going to be late. Well, what can I do? I get stuck, that's all. Now, you stay there. I'll see you in about an hour, an hour and a half. Bye-bye, sweetheart. On my way to the uh, powder room, I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. No, of course you didn't. You know, Steve, you've always slightly puzzled me. I, I mean, if you must have extramarital fun, why do you always pick on secretaries? I should think you'd be much more discriminating. How do you mean, discriminating? A man of your position. <laughs> well, I'd imagine you'd want to hitch up with a woman of comparable status. If you like fun and games, there. Must be a dozen females in our group alone who would qualify. Like who? <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. Well, young Harold must be getting dull in the bedroom, huh? Not dull exactly, just uh, routine. You're not playing games with me, are you? Try me. Sure. We could have dinner tomorrow night for a start, and then... Why put it off? 
Well, you got a husband out there, remember? Hal is very tolerant. Oh, is he? Yes. He's a good man. Maybe too good. I think he's a prize patsy. He knows what I am, and he loves me anyway. What are you? Why don't you find out? Oh, I will. Why don't we meet a little later at Mario's, about 9 o'clock? Do you think you can uh, clear it with sweetheart? Oh. <laughs> well, now, uh, let me see. Of course, the whole concept of God is outmoded, but it served us well. You know, I must confess, I'm going to miss the trappings of formalized religion. For one thing, I've admired some of the people it's attracted. Oh, come off it, George. Every time you get on one of these tacks, you lose me completely. Well, they're wholesome, good thinkers. And what has religion ever done for these wholesome, good thinkers on this misbegotten world besides muck up their brains with fear and superstitious nonsense? Well, George, I'm afraid I have to agree with you. You know, despite these blunders and mistakes, these uh, fears and superstitions, religion seemed to represent a kind of, well, a planned order, a civilization, if you want even let us show a bit of concern for our fellow man once in a while. I just wonder what we're going to find to take its place. <laughs> Not from the psychiatrist. Nothing, doctor. We need another god image like we need another world war. Excuse me, gentlemen. I think that maybe you missed the point of my question. What I wanted to know was simply this. What do you think caused the death of this god image? Well, I wish I could explain that, but I've never believed in the concept of god. Well, it's a, a good concept. Beautiful, but impossible. Impossible? Well, for me. I think the closest thing I've ever come to a religion is, well, let's call it a concern for other people. What's the connection? Well, it just seems like there's something in people that goes beyond them. Now, I wish I could bring that into sharper focus, but... Well, that's all been taken care of, hasn't it? I mean, there's no need to worry. God is officially dead. Oh. Hey, everybody, the goodies are getting cold. Doesn't anybody want to eat? Yeah, sure, but first I want another one of these before the glow wears off. You having the same thing, Stella? Right. Well, if you can't beat them, you join them. Senora, please, let me fix up a plate for you. It will be much better that way. What's that all about, Bergman? The bells in the chapel, senor. But I gave the sex an explicit instructions. Senor, the electricity wires that make the bells ring. Maybe something goes wrong. Tomas, go over to the chapel and find out what's wrong. I want those bells silenced immediately. Si, si, senor. Elena, you better get some more ice. We're running low. Si, senora. Lynn, can I give you a refill? Oh, no, this is fine, thanks. Sure? George, have you uh, given any thought to what we discussed last week? Well, I, I haven't entirely made up my mind. This whole business of politics, it's such a jungle. But you should be used to that. State politics are just like school politics. Not exactly like running for governor. But it's not that difficult with the right people behind you. I'm aware of that. Tell me something, Lynn. Why are you promoting me? It's not sex, dear heart, if that's what you're thinking. That's my husband's preoccupation, and he's welcome to it. I couldn't care less. Our group is interested in you as a potential winner. With some strong campaigning, we feel you have a good chance. You are ambitious, aren't you, George? As ambitious as the next man. But what makes you think I'd want to be governor? Oh, I've watched you for years. You married dear Nancy over there not because you loved her, but because Daddy was the head of the Board of Regents. Why, Lynn, I'm surprised at you. Well, you sure knew it wouldn't hurt. And you were sharp. Played all the angles and got to be president of this great establishment. Now, why not try the governorship on for size? You might not be in love with your bedfellows, but you'll find a way to tolerate them. Because what you want is power, George. Real power. Political power. Right? And what do you want, Lynn? What would you get out of all this? Oh, a very nice feeling. Like nursing along a champion runner. A little like playing God, I suppose. 
I see. Please, senora. Nobody, still they don't want to eat? No, they don't want to eat. <laughs> don't bother me, Elena. I'll let you know. How <laughs> marvelous. You know, since we're on the subject, I've, I've just had the most intriguing idea. You know, how lovely. Do be sweet and keep it to yourself. Not at all. And we'll play a detective game. It'll be much more interesting than the usual thing. This one will be for real. We'll play Who Killed God. I quit killing your ass, No, I mean it. Then we'll go around the group and ask everybody for clues and things. Motives. Things like that. We'll finally find out who killed God. Simple. Very simple. And very dull. No, on the contrary, Mrs. Bergman, I think it might be very interesting. For instance, Professor Wyatt, who do you think killed God? I think the question is ridiculous. Since God never existed, how can we possibly pronounce him dead? <laughs> then you don't agree with the pronouncement. I agree now, only because it destroys a stupid fable that should have been put to rest centuries ago. Come on, Paul. Stop ducking around and take a stand. The name of the games, Who Killed God? I pass for now. Dr. Bergman, what's your hypothesis? Well, frankly, I don't think anyone killed him. It's a clear case of senility. <laughs> Death by old age. He simply outlived his usefulness. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, George. I wonder. Maybe we all killed him. Killed him inside. To salve our conscience. Why, Harold, coming from you, that's surprising. You almost sound like a believer. <clears throat> oh, no. Too many questions, too few answers. It's just that I don't believe in religious people. So-called religious people. Their actions don't fit their words. And I don't know how they live with their conscience. You're not supposed to know, Harold. A man's conscience is his own personal business. You're welcome to yours, Kelly. I know a man's conscience is his personal business, but it has to be checked, doesn't it? Like, how many times have we lied? Turned off somebody close to us. Just shut them out. Used them. Everybody uses everybody else. That's the name of the gang. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm afraid you're right. Not only here. Just look at our society all over the world. Corruption in the highest places in government. People, masses of people starving to death. And what do we do? We just turn our backs. Poverty, discrimination, human degradation. And the unethical, if not criminal machinations of big industry, big labor, and on and on. You by any chance referring to that newspaper story about my business operations? <laughs> well, if the shoe fits, Mr. Kelly. Because I want to tell you something. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks about me. I own plants and companies all over the world. I run them the way I want to run them because they're my property. And I don't need any advice from any eggheads. Oh, forget it, Steve. No harm intended. Hal wasn't singling anyone out. Mrs. Bergman, you were about to say. Huh? Me? Oh, well, I... Senor. Senor, I go to the chapel, like you say. But there's nobody there. This is ridiculous. The chapel is empty. Empty. Only the, the coffin is there. All right, Tomas, I want you to go back to the chapel and have someone stop those bells immediately. Uh, if you can't find the sexton, then call the campus police. Anybody. See. Si. <laughs> Very amusing. Perhaps our fun-loving students are at it again. Perhaps so, but I, I'm afraid the humor escapes me. Mrs. Bergman. You were about to say. No. Oh, yes. That. God. Well, he's dead. And I think we ought to let him rest. I mean, after all, he has earned it, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I, uh, I don't feel very well. I think I'd better take a nap. Come along, dear. Why don't you have something to eat? No, I don't want to eat. And I don't want to talk. I mean, after all, what have I got to say? Nothing. I am just the wife of the university president. Just the dull, stupid wife of the university president. Well, let me help you. No, no, thank you, George. I mean, after all this time, why start now? This story of Life. Actually, we deserve everything, but we get nothing. It's a stinking deal. 
No laughs, no love, nothing. <laughs> Isn't that simply marvelous coming from the eminent scientist philosopher Paul Wyatt, Ph.D.? <laughs> what an absolutely gorgeous study in self-pity. No nothing, he says. No laughs, no love. What in hell would you ever know about love, Professor? The closest thing you ever came to love was something crawling in a test tube. Stella? <laughs> That's true, isn't it? What would a, a cold fish egomaniac like you know about love, or, or people, or God, even if he did exist? A while ago, you asked me who killed God. Right. You couldn't even answer a simple question like that. <laughs> you couldn't even get involved in a stupid little game with other stupid people. I'm getting involved now. May I suggest that you had a hand in the killing as well as anyone? Oh, did I now? Mm, yes, we all accomplish our killings in our own peculiar little ways. And, and how did I manage mine? You're sure you want me to explain that? Why do you make everything sound so mysterious? You didn't answer my question. Are you sure you want me to explain that? No, perhaps not. Explain it to us, Wyatt. We're listening. Oh, shut up, Kelly. You killed God. God, or whatever it is you choose to call it. You killed it. Deliberately and selfishly every time you went to bed with another man. A man other than your husband. But I was never one of those men who agreed to go along with you. Was I, my dear? Dear girl. How beautifully vicious, darling. I always knew there was something about you that I absolutely despised. Well, you had to say it, didn't you, Paul? She wanted to play games. I play my games honestly. Hello? Sí, Tomás. Sí, sí. No te apures. Yo le digo. Adiós. Oh, señor Berman. It's Tomás in the telephone. He wants to know you can come to the chapel. He's very afraid. All right, I'll solve this damn thing for myself once and for all. Oh, well, I'll go along with you. I could use some fresh air. Well, why don't we make it a party? I think we could all use some air. Oh, senor. Este es muy malo, muy oh, malo. Calm down, Tomas, calm down. There's nothing to be afraid but of. But look, senor, look there. Is that somebody's idea of a joke, Bergman? Tomas. Tomas. You're sure you saw no one inside or outside the chapel? No, senor, no one is no one. How in the world? Señor, 
The box. Inside is something terrible, yes? No, I saw nothing. All I saw was an empty coffin. Thomas. Those bells. Did you find out why they're ringing now? I, I do not know, senor. But I do not think the bells ring for God. I think they only ring for us. The idols of money, sex, power, and ego promise much. They deliver little. If we live for them, we die inside. What's the alternative? Live for God. Serve him in other people. But what kind of God are we talking about? A spiritual sugar daddy who lives up in the clouds, who has a long white beard, and who pats us on the head when we're good? A stern old tyrant? with darting eyes who's looking for an excuse to send us to hell, and who wants us to grovel at his feet rather than to stand in his presence? A cool and aloof spirit who lives in outer space, and who's so busy running the universe he doesn't have time to care about the people he made? These are distorted notions of God. The sooner they are laid to rest, the better, because they have little in common with the God of the Old and New Testaments. He is a God who cares. He's not far away. He's as close as the nearest human being. In our relationship with other people, and in the depths of our own soul, he speaks to us. He says, I love you. I would like you to accept my love. I'd like you to return it. If we say yes to that invitation, God's love flows into our hearts, and he takes over within us and begins to act through us. In the process, we grow to full manhood. We sense our freedom. We feel our dignity. And we reach out in love for our fellow human beings. God lives in them, too. If we love them and allow them to love us, the circuit is closed and the current flows. We are swept into the life of God. He is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>